Hey there, welcome back to Throne FC. In less than two weeks, the Premier League will return. New teams will get a chance to prove their worth, while the established ones will fight tooth and nail to keep their spot in the sun. But what if we could time travel 10 years into the past? Today, I'm gonna show you the 20 clubs that will participate in the Premier League and tell you exactly how they were 10 years ago. And if you just wanna see how your club was doing back then, I'll leave the timestamps for each team in the description. So say one last goodbye to your reality, fasten your seatbelt and let's get right to it. Starting out with Arsenal. Back in 2013, Arsenal fully embodied the meme of always finishing fourth. But hey, in 2012-2013 they finished above sports, so I guess that was enough to make them happy. Either way, they were going through an 8 year trophy drought that Van Gerg promised to end in the following season through some major investment in the transfer market. Viviano, Flamini, Karlstrom, Sanogo and of course, how could I forget, Mesut Ozil on deadline day. Except for the German playmaker, was that really a big investment? I guess it was good enough to end their trophy drought as they would go on to win the FA Cup. Other than that, it was just a typical Arsenal season, 4th place finish in the league and a round of 16 exit at the ends of Bayern Munich. Up next, we got Aston Villa. The villains weren't doing too well, but at least they weren't getting relegated. Yet. Back then, their biggest star and top scorer was undoubtedly Christian Benteke, who nowadays is having his fun in the MLS with DC United. Oh, and before he turned into England's biggest drunk, Grealish was a youngster in this Aston Villa team. Much better now, right villains? Now let's go south and see what Bournemouth was doing. 10 years ago, the Sherrys got promoted for the first time. To the championship. But in all seriousness, that just serves as a reminder that natural evolution in football is completely possible. Eddie Howe was their coach and this season he'll manage Newcastle in the Champions League. While regarding transfers, the big names that they brought in to avoid relegation from the Championship were beaten up by an art and Janker Morgant. And nowadays they can afford to spend 60 million pounds on youngsters, such as Kerkes, Favre, Justin Kluivert or Ahmed Traore. But a club that was in an even worse position than Bournemouth was Brentford. In 2013, Brentford suffered a massive heartbreak as they lost a winner-takes-all match to get automatic promotion against Doncaster Rovers with a last-minute goal. Then they lost in the playoffs again, this time to Yeovil Town. And before you ask, no, it wasn't because even Tony was betting against his team. In fact, he wasn't even there in the first place. It was all so close for Brentford, but in the 2013-2014 season, they would get their comeuppance and return to the championship 21 years later. Moving on to Brighton and Ove Albion. Nowadays, the Seagulls seem to be a trendy club to support and have uncovered several hidden gems in football. Ten years ago, they were just a solid championship team who couldn't figure out how to get promoted to the Premier League. In 2013, they were beaten by Crystal Palace in the playoffs and one year later, they would suffer the same fate at the ends of Derby County. But hey, nowadays Brighton is in much better shape than the teams who beat them a decade ago. Up next, we got the newly promoted Burnley. Ok, I'm not gonna get all the Burnley fans hopes up and say that they're so much better now being managed by company because we essentially haven't seen anything from them in the top flight. All I can say is that his football is much more attractive than Sean Dyche's. Either way, it was the rough and tough approach from Dyche that turned Burnley from a mediocre championship side into league runners up in just a year. Now let's travel to London to meet two teams starting with Chelsea. To be honest, pretty much every performance from the 21st century would be better than this past season and 2013 was no exception. By May of that year, they conquered the Europa League one year after a Champions League triumph and one month later appointed Jose Mourinho. The Blues had every reason to be excited, but the upcoming season would be somewhat disappointing as Chelsea would finish third again, but this time without winning a single trophy. Oh, and they also sold a certain someone called De Bruyne because he wasn't good enough for the Premier League. I wonder what he's doing a decade later. The other London club is Crystal Palace. One decade ago, the Eagles were fresh off the championship and were looking to avoid relegation as soon as possible. Instead, they were off to a terrible start, collecting just 3 points in the first 10 matches. That didn't last long as Crystal Palace called Tony Pulis one of the best men at avoiding relegation and with the help of an inspired Bolasi, he sailed the boat to safety with the club finishing 11th at the end of the season. 10 years later and they never evolved past that level. From the capital to Merseyside we got the usual suspects, but let's start with Everton. I wonder what the toughies think about these days. In 2013 they finished 6th in the league in David Moyes last season in charge and one year later, with Roberto Martinez at the helm, they did one better, finishing 5th above Spurs and Man United. 
Dead Lukaku in the ranks when he was actually more useful than Mark Henry as a footballer, and overall had a solid and promising team set for the future. The good old days. Moving on to their neighbours, Liverpool. Yeah, 10 years ago Liverpool weren't doing that well. In fact, their performance in the 2012-2013 season kinda makes this past season look somewhat decent. They had finished 7th and were looking to bounce back and achieve Champions League qualification. Well, they got it. Let's just forget about the fact that they won 11 matches in a row and basically had the league in their hands before their own club legend Steven Gerrard slipped in what would be the catalyst to one of the biggest bottle jobs of all time. A sole fifth place doesn't seem that bad now, right, Reds? Up next, Fulham. This one confused me a bit. Fulham were actually a pretty solid team in the Premier League, they had been mainstays in the division for over a decade, and despite already boasting a decent squad, they even brought in some interesting players from back in the day, such as Dicklenburg, Clint Dempsey, and of course, who could forget, Adel Tarabt. Either way, they finished 19th, went on to spend 4 long years in the championship, then became a yo-yo team, and now I think they're finally getting some stability. Luton Town Seeing a team like Luton Town in the Premier League is already astonishing, but to think that 10 years ago this club was competing in the Conference Premier is just crazy. Without any huge investments, Luton Town went from the 5th tier to the 1st in just a decade, all the while playing one of the strangest stadiums in the world. Heck, they even got a player from 10 years ago still in their squad today. Heading up north, we find Manchester City. At this point, Man City were finally getting their groove. They would go on to win their second league title in three years while also conquering the League Cup, meaning that they had won two titles for the first time in 44 years. Nowadays, they win a treble like it's nothing. Still, that Man City squad was a far cry from what they are today, as in the Champions League they were easily eliminated by Barca in the round of 16. Well, at least they were clearly on the rise, unlike their City rivals, Man United. Oh boy, 2013 was really the end of an era for all the Man United fans. In Fury's last season, they would win the league in a fitting end to perhaps the most successful tenure by any coach in our sport. But what followed after was an utter disaster as they would finish 7th in the league, their worst performance since 1990. 10 years later and they still haven't really bounced back. Newcastle United Another team that was a far cry from what they are today. 10 years ago, the Magpies just wanted to have a peaceful season clear from many relegation scares. Fast forward a decade later, they're looking to become Champions League mainstays. It was a different era, no doubt, as in 2013, Newcastle had barely escaped relegation. But in the following season, they would fulfill their goals and finish 10th with Alan Pardew as their manager and Lloyd Remy as their biggest star. Yikes. Another club that was far worse from what they are now is Nottingham Forest. The two-time Champions League winners were preparing for their sixth consecutive season in the Championship, and although they would finish that campaign in 11th place, I don't think that anyone was too disappointed. Forest had even dipped their toes in League 1 for a couple of seasons and were constantly on the verge of relegation back to the third tier. So overall, it was a decent year. Sheffield United This year, the Blades are returning to the top flight of English football and their biggest challenge is to avoid becoming another yo-yo team like Norwich. However, whatever happens is clearly better than what they were doing 10 years ago. In 2013, Sheffield failed to achieve promotion to the Championship, falling in the playoffs for the second year in a row. But by the end of the 2013-2014 campaign, they wouldn't have to worry about falling in the playoffs again, because they didn't even make it that far in the first place. A 7th place in League 1 and a semi-final run in the FA Cup would cap off another bittersweet season. Up next, we got Tottenham. Harry Kane hasn't been sold at the time I'm making this video, but if he is, I bet that we'll see history repeat itself 10 years later. In 2013, they sold a man who had carried them for a couple of seasons for a lot of money and then used that same money to buy a bunch of players to improve the squad. Almost all of them failed, the manager was sacked and the best they could achieve was a 6th place finish. Will it happen again? Leave your opinion in the comments. West Ham United Perhaps the most boring entry in this video, as 10 years ago, the Hammers were a mid-table Premier League team and nowadays, they're pretty much in the same place, with the exception that they sell midfielders for over 100 million pounds and win European competitions. Different squad, different badge, different stadium, but the story is more or less the same. And finally, Wolverhampton. Before Wolves turned into that Portuguese club that plays in the Premier League, they were in terrible shape. In 2013, Wolves had just been relegated for the second year in a row and were about to participate in League 1 for the first time in 24 years. If anyone told any Wolves fans from 10 years ago that they would be playing the Europa League just a few seasons later, that person would be locked in a mental asylum. 
But not all was bad, as an inspiring Noah Diko scored 13 goals in the final 4 months to seal a title for the Wolves. And that is it for the video, I hope you liked this trip down memory lane. If you did, leave a like so I know you wanna watch more content like this. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in order for me to grow the channel and stop recording in a Guitar Hero microphone. And of course, so you don't miss another interesting football video. And since you're sitting there so comfortably, watch this rewind on where were the players who famously won the league with Leicester. I'll see you there.